Welcome back to the OK Kite Border and more specifically, the Just Winging It series. In this episode, which is number four, tack development on a wing. Thanks for watching as this channel is helpful for me in keeping me intentional and accountable in my own development as I aspire to progress past just being an OK winger. Please consider subscribing to the channel below and leaving a comment. Every little bit of interaction does help. Now just to be clear, you're not going to find a lot of hot sauce on these wings with this channel, but if you are trying to build your foundational skills, then I hope that this playlist can offer some benefit. So let's jump into it now with some nuggets that I have gathered in my journey to learn how to tack under a hand. Let's begin briefly by taking a look at gear considerations. Personally, I have found the tack to be more difficult than the jibe when winging. And one of the most problematic issues early on, which becomes less imperative with progression, is having a wing that is efficient at breaking the pivot point between windward success and leeward oblivion. It is definitely easier to get the wing to the other side of the wind window with a more rigid hand wing, especially early on when you're lacking this skill development. Many times you will hear to just umbrella the wing overhead when attempting to carve upwind for the tack. But my experience has been that this just isn't extreme enough to complete the task at hand. And also using a hand wing that is smaller in size, it can be easier to maneuver early on in the transition. You want to have a sufficient amount of wind, as in the lightest of winds, your technical preciseness will need to increase to perform the tack. And staying in the flattest of conditions will decrease your frustration and progression as well. From a hydrofoil perspective, a high aspect front wing that excels in glide is going to buy you more time to initiate and complete your tack. If you're in a hurry to stay up on foil, then there are just too many other things going on to make the transition manageable in your first steps. And I'm currently using the Takuma Kujira Hydrofoil for all of my winging, and it has not disappointed for upwind angles, lift, glide, and for that ever important pitch stability and front foot switching, which I will address in a few minutes. I also find a benefit from using a wing stick to connect between the handles, and this really comes in handy when you are blindly reaching for that handhold coming out of the tack or when you want to trim your grip width over a span of handles without having to re-grip every time. Duotone had the early boom set up on their wings, but I'm really excited to try their new Duotone Slick because I think it will also offer these same benefits without losing the center strut on the wing. Grip is highly preference driven, but it can be quite frustrating to come out of your first almost successful tack to then only miss your trail hand grip hold and sink back to the surface with all the other mere mortals. For board recommendations, if you ride a small liter board, let's say between 30 and 60 liters, let's just be honest, you're probably not watching this channel. But if that's you, then I would recommend you borrowing at least a volume neutral board for a couple of sessions to get the spills out of the way. It's just so much easier, in my opinion, to get dumped and restart over and over with a board that will float you a little bit. And then once you get comfortable with those initial tacks on air, then go back to your, I hope the wind doesn't die boards. I'm sorry, that came from a place of envy. Forgive me. If there were just one key to my progression in completing the tack, it would have to be land training. You may look like a kook, but many say that wingers on the water look like kooks anyhow. So I don't know what that makes me on land, but it's actually fairly enjoyable. Really just a six to 10 mile per hour wind with a five meter wing and you're good to go in an open parking lot. Now are pavement kooks going to be sweeping the wind sports market? Probably not, but the carryover to the water can be quite beneficial. I use the Tri-Deck three-wheel board and it scoots around pretty well over paved surfaces. This is a good place to start switching the wing over during that initiation of the tack to start carving up wind and coming out of that tack to generate enough energy in the wing to complete your tack. 
Just make sure to put duct tape on the tips of your wings as these wings, they're not known for their resistance to abrasion. Working with heel to toe tacks and toe to heel tacks in alternating fashion can give you a load of volume training over just a very short amount of time invested. Now, as you progress on land, take those same progressions to the water, then return to the land and start carving up wind sooner, synchronize your carbs with your wing pivots, and recognize the way that pulling the back handle and pointing the board more downwind will throttle your power coming out of the tack. Obviously, there are many different methods and nuances to complete the air tack on the water. These are just some of the personal points that I have documented with my individual struggles and they are not a one size fits all. I found out that initially I had more success if I built up speed crosswind or maybe even a little off wind a bit before bringing the wing to the other side with my upwind lead arm. Some people, they prefer to switch front hands before the reach across, but I found personally that I needed a larger distance of separation to break over the window and it'll avoid the leeward pullback off of my board. My initial focus was only about riding the board flat, not carving, but getting the wing to my upwind hand as far as possible, facing it to the wind, and this beginning stage movement offered me repeatable success in breaking that wind axis without a highly technical maneuver. With the wing in my front, upwind hand, I still tried to leave the board pretty flat by just applying pressure through my front heel and rear toes, turning the board into the wind so there was no heavy carving occurring for me. There's actually a point where the outstretched wing will aid in this angle and break the axis and to begin to pull you across the wind. If you start touching down going into the wind, just apply a little bit more back foot pressure with the maneuver. Then when reaching across for the front handle with the opposite hand, your pelvis will rotate more, bringing you to the other side completely. And now with both hands briefly on the front handle, your trail arm needs to be efficient in regaining a hand grip, almost blindly for a second at the rear of the wing. And this is the position where I find a lot of value from a wing stick spanning that distance. Then once repositioned with the grip on the wing and on your toe side, Pull in on the rear hand to throttle the hand wing and briefly follow by pointing your board downwind before regaining speed and angling upwind again. So this is the method I used for a few sessions and then I became more comfortable in both directions accomplishing this entry level tack. But of course, it's not the final product. At this point, you're still losing a fair amount of upwind gain and you're not switching feet, which can aid in more upwind gain and a bit on that later but I would call this a successful tack and a great foundation for going forward. As you get more and more comfortable with gliding tacks, you are going to want to start carving into the tack a little more and being more aggressive with your hand wing redirection. This will allow you to be able to be more reactive with your tack and less of a planned buildup. Start using your trail hand to actually aid in this initiation of the move of the wing to the upwind side and breaking that axis. With this movement, start to coordinate your carve upwind. It almost feels like a synchronous movement. Make sure to increase back foot pressure through the carve. In the hand transition, it will be exactly the same as with the basic level tack, but you will now be much more efficient in your hand switches just due to sheer volume of practice. Now you're able to exit just as before with a toe side stance and you can choose to continue in that orientation or you can switch feet at a later time. If you would like to retain even more upwind gain, then after securing your handhold on the hand wing and from a toe side stance, give that board a small bump with the rear foot while at the same time pulling in on the back hand of the hand wing and leaning some against it, making a foot switch and then apply pressure through the windward rail of the board to maintain that upwind position. The hand wing will actually provide more stability and counter the rail more than you may think when attempting to switch directly out of the carve and hand swap. When attempting in the lightest of conditions, you may need to pull that hand wing more into you to counter the foot switch and rail pressure, as well as to pump the wing on the exit. And don't be surprised if you do need a quick touchdown before reinitiating speed on foil. 
Also, don't be surprised if you start using this tack as your go-to transition in the lightest of conditions because you're able to keep full tension in the canopy of the wing throughout this maneuver, which is rarely the case with the downwind jibe. I've found that a more rigid wing with more grunt makes the entire progression of the tack much easier, whether that's to umbrella the wing, to redirect, or to have that available grunt when switching feet and maintaining your upwind position out of the tack. At this point of progression, repetition is your friend. Start taking shorter tacks, less preparation, transitioning in both directions, and link together a number of tacks together. This will get your heart rate going, it will produce great internal excitement, and it will leave beachgoers just completely unimpressed. Some common misses with a more aggressive approach or in lighter conditions to the tack are catching a rail, touchdown on the carve, and or on the foot switch, and a lack of power coming out of the tack. These misses though, you are usually able to ride out of and they are easy to address in future attempts. The key is, if you are successfully pivoting the wing to the other side, then you are well on your way to a successful air tack. If your preference is to enter the tack from a toe side stance and then exit on hillside, well then most of these steps are the same. The only sensational difference is that when switching front hands, you will feel that your wing and your upper body is more outside of your center of gravity. But once you pull in on the back hand to exit the tack, that will all be recentered. You may feel that this is more of a pivot at times when powering the wing through the back hand. And also, a missed toe to heel tack, well, it's extremely forgiving and usually it just leaves you in this slow, controlled descent with your board trailing but you can still approach it in the same manner of progression as I stated above for the heel to toe tack. So that is all for this episode. Thanks again to Green Hat Kiteboarding. I am very appreciative of their commitment to this channel. And if you get a chance, please check them out and consider them for your wind and board sports needs. And we'll see you next time on the OK Kiteboarder. Feel that base. We gonna shake up this place. Say pick up, pick up that base. We got no time to waste, everybody say feel